Hi, my name's Bill, and today we're going to be talking about a little bit of electrophysiology and the conduction system of the heart. So I thought we'd break it up into two main sections, the ventricular myocyte potential and then the pacemaker potential, just because they're slightly different and it's, it's also very relevant uh, physiology to know. So talking about the ventricular myocyte potential, there are five different phases that we need to know about. And these are phase 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now the ordering of these is a little bit odd in that phase 4 is actually the one that we consider occurring first. And that's the point of isoelectricity. And it's where sodium and calcium channels are closed. But there's leaky potassium channels just allowing uh, the membrane potential to stay at uh, about minus 90 millivolts. After this, phase zero occurs, which is a rapid sodium influx through fast sodium channels, and this depolarizes the membrane to kick off the action potential. Phase one occurs once uh, the potential reaches um, its maximum threshold, and when this happens it causes potass transient potassium channels to open um, so that potassium can leave the cell and begin to make the, mem the membrane potential more negative. This occurs for a tiny little bit of time, and then slow cal L-type calcium channels open, and these L-type calcium channels allow a calcium influx that helps to uh, electrically balance out the potassium efflux through the delayed potassium channels, and this causes a, a plateau in the potential. After a little bit more time, phase three occurs, and phase three is where calcium channels uh, begin to close but the potassium channels are still open, causing the membrane potential to dip right back down to a point of isoelectricity at minus 90 millivolts. After this, we're back to phase four, and we just cycle through those again in the order of phase four, zero, one, two, three. And that's the ventricular myocyte potential. Now the pacemaker potential is uh, slightly different in that it undulates like a waveform, whereas the ventricular myocyte potential um, it sort of goes from a point of isoelectricity, and it's almost like you're climbing a cliff as it depolarizes. So it's very vertical, and then it begins to taper off a little bit after that. So with the pacemaker potential, it's slightly different in that there are only three phases that we consider, and oddly enough, these phases are phase four, zero, and three. So the resting membrane potential for um, pacemaker cells is about minus 75 millivolts, which means they're slightly more excitable than the ventricular myocytes. So phase four occurs first, and this is where we have a slow influx of sodium ions via funny current channels. And these funny current channels slowly deep, uh, begin to push the membrane potential up to the action potential threshold. Once this threshold is reached, phase zero occurs, which is where T and L type calcium channels open, causing the cell to completely depolarize. Once the cell has reached its maximum point of depolarization, Phase three occurs, and this is where potassium channels open, both fast and slow potassium channels, and the calcium channels close, causing the cell to completely repolarize. Re now after this, the funny current channels um, will kick in again in phase four, and we just undulate through that like a waveform. One thing that's harped on about um, is the funny current channels, and it's sort of never really explained what they do, but simply put, they just help to maintain automation of the heart rhythm. Um, just by allowing for an inherent leakiness of sodium ions to push the membrane potential from its resting at minus 75 uh, up to the action potential threshold. The next thing we're going to talk about is the hierarchy of cells within the conduction system. So essentially if we're talking about the flow of um, the impulse, it goes from the SA node, the interatrial fibers, to the AV node, into the bundle of His. Um, then into left and right bundle branches, and then into the Purkinje fibers to excite the ventricular myocytes to contract. Now, the SA node sets the base rhythm of the heart between 60 and 100 beats per minute. If the SA node was not there, the AV node can also beat independently at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. And then if neither the SA node or the AV node are present, then Purkinje fibers can, beat, uh, can, can cause the heart to contract at a rate of less than 40 beats per minute. So what this means is essentially that because the SA node has the fastest base rhythm or base rate of the heart at 60 to 100 beats per minute, it also sets the pace for uh, both the AV node and the Purkinje fibers to contract. One of the other important things um, is the speed of conduction. 
and the speed of conduction um, varies in different parts of the heart. With the SA node setting the rate of depolarization, there has to be different conduction speeds um, in the particular cells of the heart to allow for the heart to contract as a unit. And what this means is that we've got a delay at the AV node, which means that those fibers in the AV node conduct the pacemaker potential at the slowest speed. And that's just to allow the atria to contract before the ventricles do. Now the, the bundle of his left and right bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers all spread the membrane, uh, sorry, all spread the, the potential at two to four meters per second, which compared to the rest of the heart is relatively quick. And this just allows all of the ventricle to contract at the same time um, to allow for maximum expulsion of the blood into the pulmonary artery or the aorta. Something else that we often talk about are which cells are the first to depolarize and which cells are the first to repolarize. So usually the first cells to depolarize take the longest time to repolarize and the last cells to depolarize take the shortest time to, to repolarize. Now this doesn't mean that the first cell to depolarize is the last to repolarize. It just means that the time it takes to repolarize is the longest. And the reason we have this is so that the cells at the start of the conduction system, so the uh, SA node and uh, the, the interatrial fibers or the internodal fibers, can reset. And what this means is that the interatrial or internodal fibers can then reset and be ready for the next action potential at about this, at roughly the same time as the ventricular myocytes are ready for that potential. And this just allows for complete union between the two system, so the atria and the ventricles, um, uh, to help with contraction and uh, unidirectional flow of blood throughout the heart. We should also talk a little bit about vagal and sympathetic stimulation um, and how that influences the heart rate. So this will be very brief, um, and all I'll say is that with vagal stimulation, which goes to the SA node and the AV node only, is used to slow the heart rate via the vagal nerve releasing acetylcholine on muscarinic 2 receptors, which reduces cyclic AMP to reduce the activity um, of all of the, the ion channels in the pacemaker potential. If we're reducing the activity of that, you can imagine it would just prolong each of the, each of the different phases. Sympathetic stimulation um, occurs when norepinephrine or noradrenaline binds to beta-1 re adrenergic receptors to increase cyclic AMP, which increases the activity of these ion channels. Um, just causing a quickening of the pacemaker potential. And finally, as a bit of a pharmacology tie-in, we can talk about antiarrhythmics, which can be helpful in correcting dysfunction of the cardiac action potential. So there are four main classes, one, two, three, and four. Class one has three different classes, uh, subclasses, so 1A, 1B, and 1C. 1A um, block active sodium channels, 1B block inactive sodium channels, and 1C block all types of sodium channels. Class two um, are beta blockers. So these ones just help to reduce the impulse frequency and strength of the conduction system. Class three are uh, potassium channel blockers and class four are calcium channel blockers. And that's all for the electrophysiology of the heart.